Hey Cubisters, welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, we have an interview with Phil Yu from The Cubicle. Drug, The Cubicle would like to know, if you sponsor somebody, what are you looking to see in their channel or account? So if we sponsor a person, we would obviously like to see some messaging that they are in fact sponsored. I think that's pretty important. Um, but aside from that, I hope that people who are sponsored can continue to make content however they like and whatever they find interesting uh, because I think that's the only organic way to uh, stay motivated and focused in the long run. I think that uh, should really help consistency. The next three questions all come from Nihad Hubert and the first one is, what are all of your mains? I don't do too many events. Uh, my main 2x2 is the GAN 251M Pro. It feels weird saying that because it's such a new cube, but I just tried it yesterday and today and it's fantastic. I really like it. For 3x3, I have a couple favorites. Uh, I like the Weilong WRM and the GAN 11M Duo and the Qi EMS. Uh, those are my favorites. And uh, for one-handed, I'm a big fan of the original Tang Yun. The second question from Nihad is, what is the favorite competition that you have gone to? Uh, it's pretty hard to name one competition that I really liked, but uh, I tend to like pretty much every competition I go to. I can't really complain. If I had to name a series, I would say Cubing USA Nationals is uh, one of my favorite series. It is a really big competition and we do have a lot of involvement uh, in making the experience cool, but it's just great to see so many people and uh, so many new faces and old friends. It's a really cool environment. The third and final question from Nihad is to rate your YouTube channel. Rate my YouTube channel, okay. So uh, I actually genuinely believe that my YouTube channel has content that is thought-provoking and interesting whether you consider it quality is subjective i know i don't do any fancy editing but i do come up with some pretty interesting ideas so in that perspective i think it is pretty good i do struggle with consistency uh, i don't upload on a normal schedule and so i can see if i wanted to make youtube bigger i would probably have to you know devote some consideration to making it uh, more consistent and more predictable for sure can the cuber like to know how did you come up with the name for the cubicle so the cubicle name came up i think it was supposed to be just a crappy silly pun uh, i don't think it, it was we thought about it too much uh and now it's it's been our workplace for 10 years so um i guess we're stuck with it unless we change our name which is probably a bad idea but i think it's just a reference to uh you know us working and being productive uh and being professional but at the same time appreciating crappy puns. So it's a mix of our serious and humorous side. Again, I'm not even gonna try and pronounce that, but they're wondering, why are you so interested in cubing and why do your projects relate to it? Well, I'm interested in cubing because I think I grew up valuing soloistic activities. Like I grew up being a tennis player and a violinist. And for both of those activities, you can put in the hard work and the practice and hopefully you'll see a result. And cubing is pretty similar, you know, you practice and as long as you're disciplined and you know what you're doing and you work hard, you will get a result that you can measure and your performance is really tied to how uh, smart you are with uh, applying yourself during practice. So I think cubing is emotionally satisfying for me for that reason and my work projects are related to it because I chose to work in this industry and it's been a lot of fun. I really like it here. Nihad would like to know, what do you think the best moment in cubing history is? That's probably, if I had to say, when the cube was invented the first time, because without that it's kind of silly to consider other um, histories and other happenings. But yeah, when the cube was invented, I'm sure it was extremely creative. And uh, I think uh, Mr. Rubik or Professor Rubik um, probably didn't understand um, the full consequences of uh, what would happen with his invention but hey thanks to professor rubik i can live my life doing cube stuff and a lot of other people can enjoy his puzzle too it's pretty cool nihad would also like to know what are your favorite speed cubes my favorite speed cube is the chi ms uh the chi ms is a three by three that's on the cheaper side it's magnetic and a lot of people overlook it because they're so busy thinking about the RS3M 2020. But I do think the GE MS has a lot of value and uh, I get really good results on it. So I considered my favorite puzzle for sure. TK Cubing would like to know, what do you think are the next innovations for Cubing? So I'm actually in an interesting position where I get to spearhead some of these innovations, not all of them, but some of them. 
and uh, we can't quite talk about everything until things are really close to release. Um, so I know some of the next things that will be considered innovative, I just can't talk about them very much. Um, one thing that we have been making is, uh, is a feature called The Thing. And I think The Thing is going to be really interesting to uh, most cubers. And uh, I gave a hint on it on stream a while back. I think The Thing is going to uh, cause people to rethink how things are made. We'll just keep it at that. It's pretty cool. TK Cuby would also like to know, what's your favorite event to practice and what are your corresponding averages for that event? Right now, my favorite event is 3x3. It's because I can so easily do it. Um, I average around 9-10 seconds if I'm like not trolling, uh, maybe like mid-high 9. Um, not like safely sub-10 all the time, but most of the time I can be. And uh, I used to do one-handed a lot. I averaged around 11-12 at home with a 13 average in comp, so that used to be my best event, but I'm kind of past my prime, so I don't do one-handed as much. Quality cubing would like to know, how long have you been cubing for? I've been cubing for 13 years and one month, so I started in April of 2008 and it's May 2021, so it's been quite a long time. I've been cubing as long as Leo Borromeo has been alive. <laughs> Vince Cuber would like to know, why did you start the cubicle? Uh, I started the cubicle because uh, it was an opportunity for me and my friends to do something fun with our time, do something constructive, because I mean, we were in business school, mostly. I was like halfway in business school. But uh, it was a fun project to do, and it was also a good way to provide for the community. We saw a lot of interesting and meaningful ways to contribute to a group of people that we identify with. So it was a good opportunity for everyone, and I'm really happy to be still doing it today. I apologize if I mispronounce your name, but Anane Mintu would like to know, how do you think hashtag shorts on YouTube has changed the cubing community? So I think any form of new expression is going to benefit a community that is as media rich as speed cubing. So, uh, you know, any way you can express yourself, long, short, whatever, um, funny, serious, uh, it's, it's going to be beneficial. I know there are some shorts out there that don't really make sense. They're like kind of low effort, but you know, it's a great way to communicate uh, given how fast cubing is, given how attention spans are. So I think it's a good thing, very good thing. Thomas LeFranc would like to know, how many countries have you visited? So I'm obviously from the United States, and so I've been to America, I've been to Canada, been to a few countries in Europe, uh, Spain, Czech Republic, uh, been to a few places in Asia as well, mostly China and Japan. Uh, would really love to go to Taiwan, would uh, be cool to go to Africa or South America or Australia, just haven't really made my way out there yet. So hopefully when travel is safer, I can go somewhere new and have some fun. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that, but they're wondering, when and why did you start using ZZ as your 3 by 3 method? So I switched to ZZ in 2009. Uh, that was because I didn't want to learn OLL, which was a really terrible excuse. Um, it ended up backfiring because I learned so many more ALKs, like COLL, CLS, ZB. Um, yeah, it just it wasn't a very good reason, and but I did it, and now I'm stuck with ZZ. That's how I see the cube now. They're wondering, why do you prefer ZZ over CFOP? So that's kind of a loaded question. I don't prefer ZZ over CFOP. I'm just used to it because I have been doing it for such a long time. If I were to go back in time, I would definitely rethink my decision in the sense that I would give more mature and considerate thought towards the decision. Not that I would just switch to CFOP, but it would probably have to be more than do I want to spend time learning OLL because I think that was a really immature reason to learn ZZ. But hey, I um, got a got a record with ZZ, did pretty well for myself in competition when I was still active, so uh, I wouldn't trade that for anything, and I think ZZ definitely has some merits. Well, thanks for watching today's video. If you liked, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notifications button to get notified every time I upload a new video. If you'd like to support me at thecubicle.com next time you go shopping, use code CUBESTER at checkout to save 5% and help support me in what I do. Thanks for watching and have a fantastic day. Bye! Don't want to end up like her? Next time you shop at thecubicle.com, use code CUBESTER to save 5% off on all of your orders.